if you have somebody without any symptoms, a lot of the screening that's done, uh, especially for airports coming into the United States and Europe, is based on symptoms, meaning that you have fever or respiratory symptoms. And, and if, in fact, you're infectious uh, before you have those symptoms, that can present a real problem for screening. So the leadership of the Chinese Ministry of Health has said this is possible. Some scientists in the U.S. are skeptical. Uh, to me, it seems uh, potentially reasonable. We know there are certain viral illnesses, like measles, for instance, which uh, if late in the incubation period, a couple of days before you have symptoms, you can spread the virus. So to me, it seems quite plausible. The bottom line is this virus seems to be uh, uh, easily transmitted. Uh, we're seeing a big uptick in the number of cases in central China. The number of reported cases has almost doubled uh, in the last couple of days. And we probably have a, many more cases than that since we're probably only, we're, only the severe cases are getting reported. And China has been rather aggressive in its efforts to try and contain this virus. Are those efforts working? Should China be doing something based on your recommendation? Well, I think China, the Chinese leadership is actually doing a pretty good job. They're, they're in a very tight spot right now because it's a new virus. It's clearly uh, easily transmissible. Uh, this is a tough situation uh, to try to get your arms around. So I think given the circumstances, uh, they're taking heroic measures by implementing uh, quarantine in major cities in central China and doing everything they can, building new hospitals. So I have to give some credit uh, to China's leadership for that. Uh, the big problem is this. Uh, with a virus that's so easily transmitted from person to person, historically we know the best way to control this is uh, through vaccinations, by having a safe an effective vaccine. And that was my next question. Where do things stand with, with vaccines? Well, uh, I think, I actually think developing a vaccine against this uh, virus is not going to be that difficult. The problem is you have to have that vaccine rigorously tested for safety as well as efficacy. And a safety testing can take time, and unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time. So that's, that's the bind we're in. Uh, at uh, Baylor College of Medicine and Texas Children's Hospital, we actually uh, had NIH funding to develop a SARS vaccine, and it turns out there's a lot of similarity between the SARS virus and this new virus in terms of its genetic code and the fact that it binds to the same receptor. So there's a possibility that our SARS vaccine that we developed and manufactured could potentially find use in this epidemic. And that's something we're in discussions now with the leadership of the U.S. government to see if, if that's possible to uh, move forward in advance. Dr. Hotez, what should the U.S. or countries around the world that have seen infections, how can they help China? I think there's a number of ways we, we can be helpful, and, and I think it's very important for the United States to uh, do everything it can to help China. This is what countries do in times of public health crises uh, such, such as this one. I think one is uh, offering assistance in terms of doing anything we can to provide uh, protective wear, protective covering, especially for uh, health care workers. Uh, we have an amazing U.S. Public Health Service and Centers for Disease Control uh, to provide advice uh, in, in epidemics, and then seeing what we could do to facilitate new biotechnologies, new vaccines such as ours, as well as uh, new drugs and diagnostics. So I think uh, in times like this, we, we don't recognize international boundaries. This is a time uh, to, to help China. And, uh, and I think we do have something to offer. Uh, and I know in, in time, uh, China will help us when we have our future epidemics.